All right, we're getting pretty close to Mother's Day here. Fantastic. Mother's Day, the best, right? I wish my mom was here. Well, um, sometimes you get what you wish for. <laughs> here she comes. Hello, hey, mom. fellas. How's it going? Hey, how now, are you? Here's the only thing, though. I wish that I had some, I wish that I had some flowers. Oh. Wow. Da, da, da. Wow. Oh, nice. Everything's going so good for you right now, Landon. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you very much. Thank you We're very super, much. We're super excited about this Mother's Day message, and she's going to be with us at the end. She's going to share an encouraging word to our mothers and to our ladies. So enjoy this message and stay tuned to the end of the program. Good. We'll see you then. Rose between two thorns. <laughs> Now, uh, happy Mother's Day, a weekend, and uh, I think it is, uh, let me just say, it's a point of pride uh, among the uh, Harvest staff uh, that the best idea always wins. As if you were in a Harvest staff meeting, you'd hear that all the time. Best idea wins, best idea wins, and uh, each one of us should yield uh, to the best idea, and uh, we kind of try to practice objectivity to learn from others, uh, to abandon inferior uh, thinking. And so uh, I'm going to abandon a piece of inferior thinking this Mother's Day weekend uh, forever. Best idea wins. I read a blog this week that absolutely changed the way I think about something. And while it is very, very strongly my desire to honor mothers, guys, that's where you say amen. amen. No, no, hang on, hang on. I give you such great chances. While it is my desire uh, always uh, to honor mothers, um, I believe that I have uh, come uh, this week uh, to understand that motherhood is such a big responsibility, such a great passion, such a deep longing, uh, such a burden at times that... Uh, I came to understand that some women, women who want to be mothers, women who used to be mothers, women who are grieving for their children, it's, it's just not a big, awesome weekend. But here's what one woman wrote, and I want to speak to all of the women uh, in our church on all of our campuses right now. This gal, Amy Young, uh, wrote this. She called it the wide spectrum of mothering. Listen carefully. We should listen when someone says it better than we can say it. Uh, this really reflects my heart very much. Uh, to those who gave birth this year to their very first child, uh, we celebrate you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the, ba <laughs> and wear the badge of food stains, uh, we appreciate you. To those who experienced loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or children running away, we grieve with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes and prods and tears and disappointment, we walk in faith with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't want to make this harder than it is for you. To those who are foster moms or mentor moms or spiritual moms, to sisters and aunts and every woman giving her heart to children, we need you and we thank God for you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we rejoice with you. To those who have disappointment and heartache and distance with your children, we're waiting on God with you. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your pain. To those who lived through driving tests and medical tests and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who have aborted children, we remember them and you this weekend. 
To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we grieve that life that has not turned out the way you longed for it to be, at least not yet. To those who step-parent, we walk with you on those very complex paths. To those who envisioned lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream is not to be or not yet. We share your sadness. To those who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year, uh, we grieve and rejoice with you. <laughs> to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we walk with all of you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart. We have real warriors in our midst, and we thank God for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I decided on an uh, old school uh, sermon title uh, for this as a favorite passage of mine. I call this message, uh, Two Insensitive Men and a Praying Woman. <laughs> like that? Calm down, man. It's going to be all right. Two insensitive men and a praying woman. If you have uh, your notes there, it might say a praying mother, but I had to correct myself, just cross that out and put praying woman, because when 1 Samuel begins, the woman in, uh, we're going to uh, study here uh, is uh, not a mother yet. She's not a mother yet, not at the beginning of the story. She's just a praying woman, which leads to this opening thought that I want to uh, say to our church this uh, wonderful weekend. Uh, a burdened woman in prayer is very powerful. You got to know that. A burdened woman on her knees calling out to God is one of the most powerful forces in the universe. Not sure why it is that men uh, seem to be slower to the place of prayer. I can only speak from my own experience that. Um, if we're lost, my wife knows it first, and I'm more reluctant to admit that we should ask for directions. She doesn't know where she is for seven seconds. She wants to roll the window down and shout out to some stranger, where are we? Can you help me find? I, I could go for days through the streets and never uh, call out. It was interesting to me as we uh, worshiped today to see how quickly the aisles flooded. Thank God for every man, but it's interesting how the women will throw their Bibles open and rush to the opportunity to read from a tear-stained page in God's Word about a scripture. I'm not sure we understand that God is neither male nor female, yet he's chosen to reveal himself as father in that sense of the word. And there's just something I can only speak about the... It's not hard for me to tell my boys no at all. No is the answer. But I've never been good at saying no to my wife, never been very good at saying no to my daughter. And I wonder if there isn't something in the heart of God that is compelled when he sees a tearful, burdened, praying woman that he lean. Now watch for her uh, in this text. Um, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1. There was a certain man of Ramathim, Zophim of the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, son of Elihu, son of... To the Bible's really into these. Where'd he come from? Who was his daddy and his granddaddy? Verse 2. <laughs> See, when I was a young preacher, I didn't know how to smoothly avoid the words you feared you could not pronounce properly. <laughs> now I just... Shh. Verse 2. Love you. He had uh, two uh, wives. Right, men, now come on, man. We need a response to that. Hang, God, hang on, hang on. Guys, guys, he had two wives. And that's a terrible plan. Uh, um, you can't even handle the one you got, yo. Now, um, God's plan, Genesis 2, 24, a man should leave his father and mother and should be joined to his wife and they shall be one flesh. That's God's plan. One, guys, amen. That is God's plan. One man with one woman for a lifetime. Amen. 
Um, uh, but a lot of things in the Bible, God's not saying this is good. He's just saying this is what it was. Likely he married uh, Hannah first, and it appeared as though she would be barren. There was, uh, I think he was a, a wealthier man, and, and he was very concerned about his heirs. And so he stepped out of God's uh, highest, uh, out of God's best. But again, that's not condoned here. It's just simply uh, described. Uh, when you get to the New Testament, you can't even be a leader in the church unless you're a one-woman man. How many women spend prayer cycles on talking to others when they should be talking to God? Has the enemy been lying to you? Has he been telling you it's too late? Uh, the opportunity has passed you by. You can never have that back again. Nothing could be further from the truth. The clouds of heaven are bursting this moment with the mercy and grace that God would shower upon you if you would just come to him and ask him to revive your heart. You feel like God is far away, but you shouldn't feel as bad about it as you do. Bible greats from Jacob to Job and from Sarah to our Savior's mother Mary all struggled with difficult seasons where questions were big and God was small and real change seemed impossible. What is awesome is that God himself is concerned about this time in your life. He is ready now to lead you beside still waters to a place where you can drink deeply again from the fountain of grace. Contact us now and we will rush to you the study Pastor James prepared with your thirsty soul in mind. It's called Fresh Rain, 30 Days to Personal Revival. In this study, Pastor James shares the steps you can take to stand again under the showers of blessing God wants you to experience. The study gives biblical insight into why we sometimes get to a desert place and provides an easy to follow roadmap to the needed oasis. Pastor James has also added a special worship recording with six songs he goes back to again and again to revive his own soul. Don't spend another day longing for the good old days of your faith or wondering if things can ever be different. They can. Call today and ask for fresh rain. Give a gift of any amount and it's yours. God will meet the financial needs of ministry. We just really want to mail you this resource today. And with a gift of $110 or more, we'll also send you the Downpour book and six CD collection by Pastor James. In addition, you can be encouraged by our scripture note cards. After 30 years of ministry, this is the most important teaching James has ever done to get Christ followers out of the valley of fear, off the roller coaster of worry, past the pain of deep disappointment. Your best days are still ahead of you. It's time to do your part right now. Call right now and ask for Downpour when you call 800-545-6800 or go now to jamesmcdonald.tv. He had two wives. The name of one was Hannah. The name of the other was Penny. <laughs> Come on. And uh, uh, Penny had children. And Hannah, what's it say? No children. She get that, right? She had a burden. In a day when there was very little dignity for a woman outside of bearing a son, and with a competitor so close at hand. Now, this man used to go up year by year from his city to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh. Shiloh was where the tabernacle rested after the children of Israel got to the promised land. So here he was to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh where the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were priests of the Lord. On the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to Penny, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters, but to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her Though the Lord had, for a season we're going to see, though the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival, the word there actually means her enemy, 
used to provoke her grievously to irritate her. Imagine Penny with all of her children around her and Hannah in the same household with none. Because the Lord had closed her womb. Her rival used to provoke her grievously to irritate her. It's not hard to uh, imagine uh, this situation. And I just want to draw your attention to this reality. Hannah uh, was a woman uh, with a burden. Now, while I'm going to apply this uh, to women, this obviously has application to men too, uh, to anyone with a burden, uh, but it's, it's uh, I think, instructive. Uh, no one can avoid having burdens. Do you have burdens? Yeah. How many people have burdens? And how many people have known at times in their life great burdens? So I didn't know if I could go on. I didn't know how long I could carry that. I, now, because burdens are not avoidable, it all really comes down to this. Uh, what do you do with your burdens? Maybe this weekend, if, if you haven't done this already, I did this long ago, uh, dispense with the notion that a burden-free future uh, is coming. There will be seasons of reprieve. There will be sunny days. But this is not your rest. This is not heaven. Uh, this is earth. And there will always be burdens. There will always be uh, things to carry. There will always be things to cast us upon the Lord. And so um, just make a note of these four things. Uh, burdens are getting worse, all right? These are, uh, I'm burdened and it's getting worse. What's making it worse? It's, it's all about what you do with those burdens. Now, here's the first uh, wrong response. We talked about this to begin uh, the year. A worry, anxiety, uh, a dividing, I fret. I bite my nails. I pace back and forth. I wipe sweat from my brow. I lay awake at night. I worry. And then uh, striving uh, is the next thing. Worry uh, spends a lot of time by itself in mental turmoil. Striving tries to fix it. Look at her. She's worrying. I don't worry. I get after it. Yeah, that might be making it worse. And striving is in my own, I will, I will hand, I'm going to take care of this. And, and uh, some of us by nature are worriers. Some of us by nature are strivers. They tend to get into the same marriage. <laughs> Burdened and getting worse by worry, by striving, by gossip. Well, I, would, I wouldn't actually get very involved, but I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to say some things. I'm going to get on the phone. I'm going to get with a group of people. How many women spend prayer cycles on talking to others when they should be talking to God? How many people have you gone over that hurt with? Comparison to how many times you've got alone and poured out your heart to God. Worry, strife, gossip. Worst of all is despair. This is just really on the edge of giving up. It's never going to be different. I don't care. Look at, look at. You are God's agent for that thing to be different. You are the person that God would use through your prayerful activity. You are the person that God would use to change that. And God would change you before he would change that situation. A ver scripture that's meant a great deal to me, I think. I should do more of this in scripture. Uh, in service, pardon me, is uh, just to read a scripture. I'm going to read Psalm 62 to you. I've gone to this a lot of times. This is kind of my go-to. Psalm 62 has been for probably 20 years. Here it is. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will all of you attack a man to batter him like a leaning wall, a tottering fence? They only plan to thrust him down from his high position. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths. 
but inwardly they curse. Selah means think about that. For God alone, O oh my soul, wait in silence. My hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock. My refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O oh people. Here it is. Pour out your heart before him. That's prayer. God is a refuge for us. Think about it. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balance as they go up, they are together lighter than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. Set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God and that to you, O Lord, belongs steadfast love, for you will render to a man according to his work. Amen. A burdened woman in prayer is very powerful. Now just dropping down through the text a little bit more, uh, notice this, don't let anyone dilute your burden. God will answer you. So here she is, verse 6. Her rival, her enemy is grievously irritating her, verse 7. So it went on. What's the rest of it? Underline that in your Bible. This didn't get over in a day or a week or a month. So it went on. God's getting ready to do a miracle here. But this problem continued year by year. Several years it went on. If it was a couple, they would have said it. If it was three, it would be written. For several years this went on, year by year, as often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore, Hannah wept and would not eat. That's her heavy burden. And Elkanah, here comes insensitive husband number one. When I think of this guy, the picture that comes to mind is, is uh, kind of like this. Insensitive husband uh, number one. <laughs> I can't remember what that guy's name is, but uh, just call that Elkanah. So this is her husband. So here, here's, what, here's what he, here, here was, so she's so burdened she can't have children. She's praying and so on. And Elkanah, her husband said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Really? Really? You don't know. No, I don't know. Really? Really you don't know? No, I don't know. What's she crying for? She's always crying. And why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Here it comes. Am I not more to you than ten sons? Now, I, I don't know what it's like at your house, but my wife's silence is worse than anything she could say. So if I was to come up with something like that, am I not better to you? You know, it's just some crazy, insensitive. Everybody say insensitive. <laughs> am I not better than... <laughs> I just can't believe he said that. I can't until I think about myself. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> The worst is when she doesn't say anything. So you say, am I not better? And she's like. <laughs> and then you're like. Yeah, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't great. She has uh, the burden here uh, of, uh, of an insensitive husband. But I want to say this. Don't let anyone dilute your burden. So she's got this guy, hey, come on, come on, just let go of it. You, we don't need to have any, you don't need to have, you can surely, you can just enjoy, and, and why do you need your own, and, 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 and am I not better than, and when you have a burden from the Lord about something, all kinds of people are going to want to come up and say things to you that are going to sort of dilute that. They, they want to cheer you up. You don't need to be cheered up. You need to carry that burden to God is what you need to do. You don't need a pep talk. You need a prayer time. 
and, and those are not the same thing. Well, like we promised, we've got my mom here. Thank you for joining you us here. today. And uh, what's, what's on your heart? It's not Mother's Day today, but it's Mother's Day weekend. What's mm -hmm. on your heart for mothers this weekend? Well, really, I'm just thinking of all of the women uh, tuned in, and I know that this is a joyous day for so many, but I also know it's a difficult yeah. day. I know mm -hmm. there are women hurting over their relationship with their mother or their relationship yeah. with their daughter or children right now, and it's mm -hmm. just a complicated day. And there's ladies that want to be mothers. Yes, there are. Would you, yes. just, would you just take a second and Bless pray you. for them? And just, yes. I know your heart in this, and mm -hmm. thank you for that. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you because you are an awesome God, because your ear is always ready to hear us. We just stand amazed at that truth. And so today we pray, Lord Jesus, for the mothers that are watching and listening. We ask, Lord, that you would be with their burdens, that you would be with the things that just bring them to their knees. and. Father, the things that just bring the tears to their eyes. And Lord, we thank you that you are an understanding, almighty God, that hear everything, Lord Jesus, before we even yes. come into the trial, before we even ask. And so we mm -hmm. ask, Lord, that you would be with these gals. Be with all of us who call ourselves mothers, who know that we can't do it alone without you. So mm -hmm. be our Father, Lord Jesus, and uh, move amongst us. In your precious name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 You know, we're always talking about fathers and God our Father. And yep. you know that uh, Paul actually said, I was like a nursing mother among you. Mm -hmm. I think we've got to be reminded that mm -hmm. the picture of motherhood is, is just an awesome picture of how God wants us yeah. to care for one another. And that's why we celebrate moms because they're famous for caring, right? <laughs> moms are very caring. So what are we doing this weekend for Mother's Day, Mom? Well, my goodness, we usually have a brunch. We go someplace. <laughs> I don't have to cook. Usually we have flowers and loving words and Which honesty. is disappointing because we love your cooking. Well, and funny well, stories. You, like she's leaving saying. out all the crazy funny stories. <laughs> Next time on the program, I guarantee I'm not asking your permission. Next time on the program, you're doing your famous Mother's Day poem <laughs> that you did when you were like eight years old. Nope, nope, tune in, he's doing it. Yeah. Okay. Oh my, and I think that was your crazy idea too anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, we will see you guys here on Mother's Day for Walking the Word to You. Yeah, yeah, come on, Sunday, come back. This program was paid for by the friends and partners of Walk in the Word.